Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of my tutorial for sort of Blender-ish. Uh, this is very lightweight still, and this one here about texturing in UV is going to be even more lightweight than most. Uh, simply because this stuff is a little hard and I'm really bad at it. So what I'm going to do is give you like the sort of bare bones uh, necessary knowledge, and then in the description box down below I'm going to point you to places that you should go to find out how actual experts do it properly. Um, so what's the problem? Alright, so we want this thing to not look grey, right? Uh, and I mean, we can recolor it with flat colors, but that's not what we want to do either. We want to apply textures, right? We want to go to the internet and find some sort of tiling brick or stone texture, and we want to apply it to the side of our building and have it look really good. Now, the problem is that imagine that this were a Christmas present that you were trying to wrap, because your image that you download from the internet is a flat two-dimensional image. And then we kind of sort of want to wrap it around this structure. Well, how would you wrap this with, with your wrapping paper? It's not an easy question, and the computer certainly doesn't know how to do it by itself. So what we have to do is do something called UV mapping. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to split my view, which you can do with this little grabby pulley bit here. You can, uh, you can either pick it and drag it downwards, or um, I'm going to grab this one and actually drag it up to close this view, or you can drag it to the left, and you can keep re-splitting if you want. Right? You can keep doing that as many times as, as you want here. but. Two views is going to be more than enough. I'm going to leave my 3D view over on the right, and over on the left, I'm going to go to this little pull-down menu, and I'm going to change this to my UV image editor mode. Um, I don't want to render results, so I just X out of that just to get my, my default screen here, which you guys should probably get. All right, so um, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to drop into edit mode, and I'm going to select... I'm actually just going to select my base building here by hitting L. Do I... Not have my screencast keys. There we go. Just select the base building here by pushing L. And just to demonstrate exactly what this stuff is, I'm going to hit U. I'm going to go down to Smart UV Project. I'm going to leave the defaults and hit OK. Over on the left hand side, you can see the unwrapped version of my building. Now, if I go over to the right, I deselect everything and I go into face selection mode, you can see where each one of these faces, even this little guy here, has been mapped to. Right? And so I, I hope that should make it pretty obvious what's going on here. Now, I should be able to... Let's, um, what's this big one? Oh, it's because I'm selecting the door when I hit all. Okay. Again, I'm just trying to select the base building here just because it's going to be a little bit simpler to explain. Um, what we should be able to do is... I can't remember where the, uh, where the option for it is. What am I thinking of? New image, that's not what I meant to do, is it? I'm trying to, you can export this stuff. Oh, ex here we go, export UV layout. Gosh, why could I not see this before? Export UV layout. So what this would do is this would actually kind of save this thing here as an image that you could then load into your favorite image editing program. And you could literally start like painting over all these individual little sides here. You would, so you would see this, you would see all these lines. What you could do is you could start a new layer above it and then just paint on that and then bring it back into here and load your image, you know, um, just open image, load it in there. And then you could actually see your work happen there. And that's that's one way of doing it. It's actually a pretty good way that I've done a lot. But um, in this particular case, I'm going to take a slightly different approach to it. Uh, I'm going to go and open an image I already have going on. Uh, where am I? Sites, Econ RTS, Assets, Building Models, and then I have a, my quad texture here. Okay. So I have this image that I've already just put together in Photoshop. It's got a few different types of textures that I wanted to use in a lot of my buildings overall. So let's, uh, let's go over to the left-hand side here. And what if I go into Texture View? There we go. So I've just switched my render from Solid to Texture. So now this mapping here is going to be applied over here so I can see what's going on. You can, you can quite, quite see. If I select this... Um, this face here, you can see that it's this face right over here, and my sort of thatch texture is definitely applied there. Well, what I can do is I can manipulate this stuff. I can start grabbing these corners. Now, it's a little weird if the edges aren't square. But you can see, like, it, it changes what part of the image is being mapped to each side. And I'm hoping now, like, at this point, you're like, okay, I might not know the best way to work on this, but I, I'm kind of getting it, you know? 
Um, and if you sound like a, a surfer dude like I am, then uh, all the more power to you. Um, so yeah, so now the question is just, how do you get everything going? So it's really going to be highly dependent on what kind of structure you're doing. If you're modeling a character, you're going to use a very different procedure from the one I'm using here, um, where I'm, I'm working in this sort of very, I don't know, geometric kind of wonky way. Um, let's, you know what I want to do is I want to take care of this door here. Um, I want the door to also use the quad texture stuff. Now, by default, each one of these faces is just UV mapped to all four corners over here, which actually makes it quite convenient because at this point I can, uh, and all your commands work the same way. You can hit A to select or deselect everything over here. I can scale this down and then I can move this to just over onto the wood. And actually I'm quite happy with that, right? My little wooden door, it's not perfect, but you know, it, it's a good approximation for now. So we've got the wooden door taken care of. That makes me pretty happy. And again, let's just hit L. Why am I not? Oh, right, because I was trying to mouse over a vertex, but I was in the wrong mode. All right, so I've got my whole building over here. So we've got, um, yeah, we've got all of our stuff all spread out. That was from the, the UV, the smart UV project where it tries to figure out where all your edges are and, and how it's supposed to be arranged and at least it breaks it up in some sort of fashion so you can at least you know you can at least kind of work with it but it's not necessarily the ideal in fact um, I would be much happier if we reset all of our UVs back to the square because by default what I'm looking to do is mostly have them be the stone structure to start off with and I can you can zoom in you've got all your commands are still there I can sort of align it like this. There we are. And then, um, well, I guess I have to scale it up and align it. Well, it's not, it's gonna be far from perfect, but it'll be good enough, right? You know, I'm, I'm doing this sort of the sort of quick and dirty way rather than the necessarily ideal way. But that's why we hire, hire artists, right? Okay, so now I've got this sort of stone applied all over. And because it is supposed to be a tiling structure, it even actually kind of looks like it wraps around here uh, almost seamlessly, which is pretty good. So that's pretty good um, for the base, but for the top, I did want the wood. So let's go ahead and um, grab, we're gonna just do a box select here. We're gonna grab everything from the top, which is good. So I've got that over there. And I'm gonna move this over to use the, uh, the woody stuff over here. Now it's a little wonky because these are not supposed to be square. Uh, is there any chance that this will work correctly? There we are. See, now the projection is a little bit more accurate to that. Everything is roughly okay over here. There's always the risk that something might be rotated. Um, you know, because, uh, whoops, if I select everything here, you know, I can, I can rotate the textures. I can do all that too. That's not bad. And this top face, because it actually is square, uh, is now being distorted. So I'm actually just going to go U. I'm going to reset this one. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to shrink it down. You know what? Well, we'll put this one at an angle. What are we going to do with it? It's a good question. Should it be? It? Should I change the uh, the the texture on top to make it thatched? I don't know. A little crazy. You know what? I'm going to call that good enough for my example here. There, so we have a very quickly, very roughly kind of sketched out thing. Again, it doesn't really have that cartoony look I'm actually going for, but it's going to be good enough for prototype art for my game because that's that's all we're concerned about here. All right, so now we've got this. Now our fan, we are in textured mode and it has no texture. So let's go in here um, and take a look at that. Now this is obviously even more complicated than before. So what do we do for that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> frankly, a big part of me thinks that what I might do is get rid of the extra blades. Um, yeah, so the editing, the if you hit X here, the delete command, oops, asks you for quite a bit more stuff. If you want to delete everything, just take the vertex, vertex deletion. All right, this way I can start with just this bit of the hand. Let me make sure I've got nothing wonky selected. There we go. I can take this and I can hit this with a smart UV project, but I don't know if that's what I want. 
So there are other projections. Um, there's the unwrap, which will try to do its best to unwrap things, uh, but in this case doesn't work well because there's no seams. Because normally what you would do, say we go to edge selection here, and we uh, let's cut a seam in this. So I'm going to hold shift and select a few things. Oops, that's not what I meant to select. That one, that, that. I'm going to undo this in a second. This is just to give you an example. So I've drawn a seam. I've selected all the edges along the outside of the front. And then I can go Control E and say Mark Seam. Now, it's got a red outline around it. I don't know if you can see it on YouTube, but it does. And now if I uh, select, let me uh, just select this thing. There we go. Now if I unwrap, it will split it along the seam. And this actually works really well for organic creatures, like, you know, just people. So what you do is you put a seam all along their side and then around their, their collar, maybe around their arms, their waist, uh, and that, that sort of thing. And then you cut this and it sort of just splats them all out here as if you had skinned the person. Uh, and then it's really easy to sort of paint on them. And that would be a good example of where you might want to export your UV layouts, bring it into Photoshop and just paint on things there. Um, you can also paint in here. Um, if we switch to view, from view to paint, There we go. We've got a various paint tools here. Now you can literally, you can paint on this just like if you were in some other program. But um, A, I, I know that some people actually have great results with that because you can actually even paint on uh, things on this side of uh, your view as well. You can literally paint right on the 3D thing. If you want to spray paint something on the side like that, well, it'll take your coordinates here and actually apply it to your graphic over here, which is kind of handy. Anyway, uh, so we have this. I don't think... This is actually what I want. Um, what do I want? What does anyone want? It's a good question. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to face selection. And I'm going to make... That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all this. I'm going to um, clear my seams. I'm going to deselect the blade part down here, holding shift and then right clicking to deselect bits. Okay. Now this top bit, I'm going to go and say smart UV project. So this is all my top bit, which is ridiculously large. I'm going to scale this down and I'm going to bring this over to the wood. I make that beam wooden. And then what I'm going to do is select everything else and smart UV project. A smart UV project is kind of a crutch, but damn it, it works for me. Don't judge me. Um, I, it would work better if I had like maybe like a linen kind of texture in this particular quad. Um, this, this sort of just is supposed to be kind of a, like a sprite map almost for me. I could increase this. I could bring this in Photoshop, make it bigger, and then add more textures over here. And the advantage of doing this way is I can use this as the basis for all my buildings. And, and almost certainly that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to increase the size of this. I'm going to find myself a nice door picture. I'm going to put a door picture over here, and that's what I'm actually going to use for my doors. I'll have to find some sort of like cloth material um, and apply it to this thing, and that's fine. Um, let's... Uh, Grab that and and that. Let us select the same quad texture. Let us do a smart UV project. And we're gonna shrink this down. You know, I'm not I'm not giving this a lot of love and precision, but it's going to work just fine anyway. I'm gonna bring this up because if I bring this up here, it's gonna make the wood a little smaller over there, which is I think closer to what I want. All right, yeah, this is, God, this is so boring and bland kind of texture, but F it. If anyone wants their money back, they can. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take this thing. I'm going to go 
snap cursor to, oops, snap cursor to selected. I'm going to take this thing again. I'm going to uh, shift D escape, rotate 90, shift D escape, rotate 90, shift D escape, rotate 90. There. Wow, that's terrible. <laughs> I don't care. I'm going to use it anyway. Uh, yeah, I'll have to find some, some better textures. I'm not happy about this wood either, but it does look like it's a single beam here. And if I kind of like massaged it a little bit better, the placement um, here, I'm not quite happy with. Um, although at this point, what I can do is go L, 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 and because everything matches up, now I can edit them sort of en masse here. And what am I looking to do? I'm mostly looking... Control L to take this stuff. And just move it so it's not on the seam. And I can actually, you know, I can look at it in real time, right? As I'm moving things around. There, see, I like that better. And then this stuff down here, Control L. I'm also going to move it so that it's just somewhere on the wood, so it doesn't have that big black line anywhere. This is like the most grayest, blandest most <laughs> boring thing, but it's textured, right? Okay, let's go ahead and uh, give this a save. And we're gonna bring this into into Unity. And so, all right, where am I? There I am, okay, great. So what are we gonna see? If we go into projects and we go into my building models, I actually, I had an, an, uh, an earlier tried it and I, I was unhappy about something, so. Decided to redo it again and do it as a tutorial. So there you go. So I've got my windmill here. Now, if we explode this outwards here, you can see my object is actually made up of several sort of sub objects, some of which are awkwardly like lying on the side. And you're like, what? Why is that? Well, the reason that some of this stuff is like that is because the coordinates in Unity are or in Blender are different than Unity. The Z is the up axis here, whereas in Unity, the Y is the up axis. Also, they're not the positive directions don't match up exactly. But Unity is smart enough to sort of like figure that out. It knows that you're bringing in from Blender and will do some amount of conversion here. So everything should work okay-ish. If I drag this into the world, so there we go. We have our windmill, F to focus around it. And there we go. It's not the, quite the correct scale. Um, I think my character is actually taller than what I thought. Oh, it's because he's got the hat. That's why it's taller than two units, but that's okay. So there's a couple of things I can do. I should probably just go and scale everything up in, in Blender. It's probably the best thing. Uh, the other alternatives is this, if I click here and then I check the inspector, this is my import stuff. Um, I can change the scale factor here if I wanted to. I, I, I prefer not to do that. I prefer to leave it at one and just um, model it properly in Blender because that way you can also bring in a second object in Blender and put them side by side and you get them at all the, the right correct height. Uh, so you can see with my hut here, for example, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Although it works. Uh, with my hut here, you can see I wasn't using that earlier quad map. I'm going to start using that sort of thing. Um, but it's the same sort of technique was used to, to model this kind of hut where I have one texture with a variety of different materials in it, um, including my door texture. So uh, I'm just, I'm going to use Instead of using this, I'm going to use the other one that I've created because I think that it's better overall. Uh, what did I actually want to show with this hut? I don't remember. There was something I was going to talk about, and now I do not recall. Oh, that I could import the hut into Blender. That's what it was. And in the same in the same image that I'm already working on, in the same file I'm working on, then you can compare things side by side. I think that's what I was going to talk about. Um, so actually, before we do anything else, so we are in object mode. We're going to select all the objects. I'm going to snap my cursor uh, to center. I'm going to scale everything up by like 1.5. And then I'm going to make sure to go control A and apply the scale. Otherwise, it will not take. And the reason is um, over here. Hit N. This transform, you can see if I scale, it's got a scale factor here. Well, this is this stays in object mode. It doesn't actually affect the mesh itself. But once you apply it, it takes all the scale changes 
applies it to the mesh itself and then resets the scale to one everywhere. And that's how you can get it to work properly in Unity. So we tab back over, it's been re-imported and now our windmill is, is bigger and more impressive and ready to chop off heads with its like fan blades of death. But, um, oops. Yeah, doesn't look half bad. So I think that brings us to the end. Oh, no, I did want to talk about something else. Uh, over here, the importer. Let me get rid of the one that's sitting in the world. Uh, the importer over here, there's a couple other things you need to worry about. Oh, here you can see Blender by default creates backup files. It creates keeps two backup copies around. It's got Blend 1 and Blend 2. Uh, you can change that in the settings if it annoys you in your user preferences in file save versions you can bring that down to zero that being said it's not a bad idea to keep backup copies around i'm just saying yeah it clutters up your view but you know backup copies good stuff anyway um windmill so there are a few things you can change here if you haven't already played with that if you uh, are modeling something that needs colliders for the physics system you need to check on the colliders if you're importing something that's going to be used for kind of static geometry that you will be light mapping you need to activate the light maps there uh, one thing with the uh, the normals uh, here, the import, we talked about it indirectly for a little bit. Let me uh, let me show you something. Let's create a new file. Um, yes, reload the startup file. Let's. Um, what are we gonna do? We are gonna create a icosphere, and this will do fine. So I'll bring it up in the Z axis. And so I've got this sphere. I'm trying to think here. And we're going to make it smooth, right? So it's smooth. And I'm going to save this and bring it into Unity. I'm trying to think if this is going to create the error case that I want. Um, no. Let's say you forgot to set things smooth. I guess that'll be the example. And you bring it into Unity. Oh, that's it. If you don't want it smooth, if you want a gem like this, that that's the difference. Okay. In fact, let me uh, let me create an icosphere that is less subdivided, right? So I want a twenty-sided die, right? I'm I'm doing a Dungeons and Dragons game. I want this twenty-sided die, and I want it to look like it's got these faces like this, like it's been cut. Well, I bring this into Unity, that's the thing. And in Unity, it's all wonky and sort of, I guess it tried to smooth it. Well, why the hell is that? Well, the reason is that the, uh, the way that Unity handles things is it sort of... In Blender, you kind of have two sets of, of normals. What the hell am I talking about with normals? Normals. Okay, so I'm going to toggle on the vertex normal and face normals. Well, let's talk about the, uh, the face normals first. Right, this, a normal is a line that goes directly out of a surface. And it's used in the lighting engine to be able to determine all kinds of direction and stuff like that. Um, actually, one of the great examples I can do here is if I hit Control N, and, or actually, take, take this and say flip normals. That's what I'm going to do. Flip normals. So now all the normals are pointing inside of the sphere. Well, what, what does this mean? If I save this and go back into Unity, put it in the game world, focus on it, it does not look right in the slightest. Why is that? Well, you can't really tell here, but you're only seeing the inside of the circle. In a 3D engine, a normal gaming 3D engine, you only see one side of every triangle. So this will be more frequent if you've got, um, let me take one of these objects. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to be in, edit, be in edit mode. Face selection, there we go. And I'm going to flip a few of these normals around. Save it again. Now this will be really obvious that something not right is going on. Because you can see, like, I can see this triangle here. I can see one side of it, but I can't see the other. And that's normal. You, you, these 3D engines save time by only rendering one side of the triangles because generally speaking, you're only viewing an object from one side. Double-sided render is really bad. If you want to render something, if you want to have something flat that you can see on both sides, then, and you can see this even, whoops, inside of, uh, inside of Unity, 
if we create a, a plane, right? We take this plane, we look at it from the other side, you can't see it. It only renders one side. And that's the way it should be. But the problem is if in Blender your normals are the wrong way around, then your object is going to be all wacky. So first thing, you can select everything in edit mode. You can go control N and that will normalize your normals. Right? So it'll do its best to try to do everything properly. Or if you've got a single side selected, you can tell it to flip the normals on that side. So that's number one. The number two thing though, if we switch from face normals to vertex normals, we can see a big difference here. So right now the vertices point kind of straight out based on an average of all the planes that go into it. But if I take this and I say, I want smooth shading. Damn it, that doesn't show things properly. The pro or I, I guess it sort of does. The, the vertices still go in the same way. And the thing is that in Unity, it doesn't kind of bring in all this information the same way. It just keeps track of these normals. And so it doesn't care if it's flat or smooth. It still just brings in these normals. And that's what it uses for the lighting model. And that's why in Unity, this sphere, which should be cut, looks like it's all smooth up. So there's two ways to solve this. One, in your importer, instead of using the imported normals, you can calculate normals. And then based on some sort of smoothing angle, anything that is less sharp than this, yeah, sure, or, or smoother than this angle will be smooth shaded. Anything sharper than that will be uh, flat shaded. So there you go. You can see that it, it worked there. And now we have our gem kind of working properly. Well, my lighting in here is, is boring and, and unidirectional, which is why you're not seeing all the faces. But they are there and they are working fine. Um, that is one way of doing it, but I tend to not like to do that because I want the Blender file to be correct. So the number one trick here in Blender is after you're done doing your work or anytime, really, it doesn't make a difference. You can add these modifiers to your projects. And in fact, I really, because I was wondering some of it, the windmill looked a little wonky to me when I brought them, brought it in here. I'm sure some of these angles are being sort of like smooth shaded in a really not quite right way. There's, there, I'm, sh I'm sure of it. Uh, I suppose I can compare. If I go here and I switch to calculated normals and I hit apply. Yeah, see? Now you don't get those funny edges because it's not trying to render this as if it were round. That was the problem. It's trying to render this object as if it was all the corners were smooth. And because they're so sharp, it was looking completely off and didn't look right, but now it looks right. Okay, so I can do that, fix that with calculate, and that will, this is your, your lazy fix, but it's not your smart fix. Your smart fix is to go in, okay, I don't need you anymore, Sphere, is to go into Blender, take your object, actually all your objects, go into the modifier, add a modifier called Edge Split. And this does exactly the same thing that Unity was doing. It's saying if the edge is sharper than this angle, that actually split this so it's not kind of one contiguous object, but split this so that this face is explicitly separate from this face. Won't make much of a difference here in, uh, in Blender unless you apply, but don't apply. Uh, just keep this modifier on there. It doesn't change anything about your object. It just, you know, you edit it just like normal. And then outside of it, oh, it only used the one object. There we go. So don't mass select. You can't apply ma uh, modifiers in mass. I forgot that. You have to apply them individually. Right, so right now, if I select this, whoops, that was hide. If I grab this top face, everything is working as normal. If I tab out of here, if I apply this modifier, now I go back in here and I edit, and I grab my top face, you'll see it has been split off from the rest of the structure. Now, I don't want that applied. I, I don't like that idea, um, because I want to keep working on it as if everything were together. But I like the modifier being in there because it affects the final product. And that includes when I save. When I save like this, and then I bring it into Unity, Unity applies these modifiers at that time. So now I get my correct, nice, sharp edges, even on normal. So that's the thing. Generally speaking, in Blender, um, unless there's a good reason not to, put this edge split on everything. Or put the calculate normals on everything. Uh, I do prefer to do it in Blender, but you know either way will work. And now we've got our windmill that looks vaguely... God, it's a boring windmill. I'm not an artist. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.